Hey guys, what's up? So this is Nano Reef Freak here. I've got a lot of comments about my equipment, filtration, my light schedule, um, dosing, water changes, all that. And I'm about to cover all that real quick in the beginning of this video, and then we're going to get onto the tank, and I'm going to show you guys how it's doing. So first of all, my filtration. I use the Innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion Media Basket. I keep Kimmy Pure Blue in the top chamber. This stuff is great for reef tanks everywhere. It literally filters out everything. That's what the bags look like. Just mix it up. It's really high grade carbon and removes phosphates really well. Underneath that, I use some Seachem Matrix. This stuff is basically biological filtration and it's awesome. Without the Matrix, I really wouldn't be able to do half the stuff I do with my reef tank. And I just really love that the Matrix keeps all my stuff in check as far as all my parameters. It holds a ton of bacteria and I highly recommend it. Um, so next, let's go on to my heater. I use an Aquion preset heater. I use a 50 watt in my tank just to make sure it doesn't fail. It heats the water perfectly, turns off when it needs to. So next, let's go on to my lighting schedule. I use the Kessel A160WE Tuna Blue Light. You can find it on Marine Depot for around $249.99. It's a great LED. Um, I usually keep it on for about six hours a day and I keep it off for about 18 hours a day. The six hours I do keep it on, I keep it around 20, 25% intensity, and then I keep it on a color of about probably like 75% blue and then about 25% white or somewhere around there, maybe 70% blue, 30% white, um, but mainly it's all blue. In this video, you'll see that it is mo mostly white just so the camera picks up the quality of the corals and all the textures and everything really well. Next, I wanna cover dosing. So the only things I dose are Kalkwasser, specifically Calc Plus 2 from Brightwell Aquatics Fuel by Seachem, also known as Aqua Vitro is the line of Seachem products that that falls under, and Kick Ick by Ruby Reef. Kick Ick I only use whenever my fish get ick, which is every now and then every like six, seven months, they might get a speck or two and I'll throw a cap full of that in there. But Kalkwasser is the most important thing I dose. It's basically calcium, magnesium, and strontium in a powder. Um, basically what you do is you take like a tablespoon or teaspoon or whatever it recommends for a US gallon and throw that in your top off. You let it mix up really well and you only throw it in the tank in your top off. You never throw in the powder in your tank. Um, basically here's what the powder looks like. It's like as soon as you open it, it starts coming out. It's really like baby powder, talcum powder. Basically, once you mix that with your auto top off, you just let it automatically top off or you pour it in yourself. And then fuel is also what I use. This stuff is just a lot of amino acids, a lot of vitamins and minerals. It's not really necessary, but it's more for those soft corals and zoanthids that really need that extra bit of push. Uh, this stuff helps my zoanthids a whole lot. I dose it about every three days and I dose my calc washer whenever I top off. Just make sure to measure these things by checking with uh, either an API test kit or some other form of test kit. API is one of the most inaccurate test kits. Um, if you can get like a Red Sea one, definitely try and get a hold of that. But just keep a, keep a, an eye on all your, your levels of calcium, magnesium, your pH, your strontium, all that when you're dosing this stuff. Never let that get too hey high. Hey guys, thanks for really joining me on the Nano Reef Free channel today. If you could just leave a like down below, that helps me out a whole lot and helps me keep producing all these videos. Anyways, we're about to dive right into this tank and check out all the corals and inhabitants of it. So as you can see, this leather coral here and the zinnias and all these soft corals are just taking off. They're completely overwhelming the tank and uh, all the hermit crabs and everything are doing great. The bubble coral especially, the tentacles are out. It's just bubbling up like crazy and totally full. And uh, all the corals in here are just showing excellent growth. The lighting has done an excellent job. Uh, you know, there's tons and tons of life in this tank. And uh, there's a video clip of every single coral in here. You guys were, a lot of you were saying that, you know, I wasn't uh, close enough to my tank. So I uh, did a lot of close up of the corals and of the fish and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So I tried to capture all the inhabitants, even the little tiny goby I have in here, which you guys haven't seen yet, and uh, the, the shrimp himself. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to talk about the, uh, you know, the water changes and stuff I do for this tank. So as I said earlier, um, I use calc washer in my auto top off and I use uh, Seachem fuel every probably about three days. And uh, that just keeps the tank running really nice with all the vitamins and nutrients that it needs. And I do a water change about once a week. Every now and then I'll skimp and go uh, two weeks without a water change. Um, going two weeks is fine if you're feeding like every three days. I tend to feed the fish about every two to three days. Um, if I'm feeding the fish heavily like every two days or every day, then I'll uh, go ahead and do a water change every week. And uh, especially if you're feeding something like this anemone here, you can see like when I feed this guy, I definitely got to step up on the water changes because 
he just eats a ton of mysa shrimp and uh that can kind of make the water kind of dirty here and there um and surprisingly anemones really don't need that much light uh, i found out you know i use a kessel but i only use it about 25 30 percent so not a whole lot but uh i found out that keeping this anemone has been pretty easy because even when i forget a water change here and there an enemy does pretty good still. This is a long tentacle though, and it's not a very hard species of an enemy to keep. It's pretty hardy uh, in comparison to something like a uh, rose bubble tip or something. But basically that's all the dosing I do guys. Uh, I usually test my water every couple weeks just to make sure everything's in check. Um, this tank has been set up for about two years and I've been doing the same schedule for months. So nothing really jumps out of whack. Um, but if you're new to dosing, I would recommend testing it every couple days just to make sure you're right on par with all your levels. And uh, here we have a Cladilia leather. This is a uh, leather coral that gets pretty slimy when you touch it. It looks kind of like a Xenia and a leather coral were bred together. But uh, this thing's awesome. This is just a brown variant. And I absolutely love this guy. And uh, he eats the light up. I mean, he is huge. And uh, so do all these other corals in here. They just eat the light up like crazy. Um, the only bad thing about having all these leather corals in the tank is they do release a lot of toxins. And if you have a lot of leather corals in your tank like this, you're definitely going to want to keep up on your weekly water changes too. Just to keep those toxins from hurting your other corals. Um, these toxins will definitely hurt your SPS and stuff like that. So just be careful with that, guys. Um, but basically, that's all I do as far as corals and stuff. I mean, and stuff, they, they just explode. I don't know uh, what else to really recommend other than, you know, doing some simple dosing keeping your light low uh, generally you'll kill a coral quicker with more light than less light uh, same with dosing you'll kill a coral with more dosing than less dosing usually um, so maybe if you guys are having some problems just kind of take a step back uh, with all your dosing and stuff but uh, my light schedule is only six hours a day as i said earlier and uh, you know six hours a day it, i know it doesn't seem like a lot but you know the corals don't really need a uh, more than like six or seven hours a day eight probably at the most um, i've seen some people that run their tank on about 12 hours of light a day um, which is quite a bit of light but if you got a really low intensity light like just a regular uh, bulb or something from petco you might need to run it longer if you got t5s you might need to go eight or nine hours but uh with these leds are so strong you really only have to go about six hours and you're you'll be totally fine Corals will get plenty of light, they'll get plenty of growth. Uh, as you can see, Xenias are just taking over, they're pulsing a little bit, um, they're nice water flow. Water flow is another thing with corals too, is you really got to keep that water flow high, got to keep uh, a lot of your corals in there, especially your leathers, got to have a lot of water flow. I know SPS have to have a ton of water flow, like power heads and everything. So, you know, if you guys' corals aren't doing very well, maybe give them some more water flow, uh, or maybe dial back your lighting. Um, who knows, you know, so just uh, play around with it and experiment. You should notice changes pretty quickly if your corals don't really like something. Um, as far as equipment goes, though, guys, I'll uh, touch back on that real quick. I just use uh, Matrix and Kimmy Pure Blue in my tank, and that does great. Kimmy Pure Blue is just absolutely amazing. Uh, that It's got a lot of stuff in it, but basically it's just really high-grade carbon and some uh, some phosphate remover. And by gosh, that stuff does great work. It just keeps the tank spotless and uh, keeps the water super clean. I absolutely could not go a day without Kimmy Pure Blue in my tank. I really couldn't. Uh, it's about $15 for uh, like a normal size small bag of it that fits in this tank perfectly. And you got to change the Kimmy Pure Blue about every five, six months. Um, it generally lasts pretty long because it's meant for a 35 gallon tank. Since I only have it in a 10, it lasts me from around six or seven months. And I just can't get enough of the stuff, guys. Definitely go check out Kimmy Pure. Uh, I think Cobalt Aquatics makes it. I could be wrong, but definitely go check out Kimmy Pure Blue and just pick some up and try it, guys. It's totally worth the 15 bucks every six or seven months. And that's really the only mechanical filtration I have, really, other than that, it's just the Matrix. Um, every now and then I'll use a piece of floss pad just to get some of the fine particles out. And uh, that does a pretty good job, too. As you can see, here's a devil's hand. This guy, uh, he stays pretty pretty squished up some days, um, but some days he really opens up and just takes off. That's just something with devil's hand. They just open and close whenever they feel like it, really. Some days they'll just be having a bad day, and some days they'll just be having a good day. So who knows? They're just kind of like humans, which is kind of weird, but they're pretty great corals. This one's a green one, even though it's kind of hard to see, but I absolutely love these devil's hand corals, guys. If you don't have a devil's hand, go pick one up. Um, they're, not the, my, they're not my favorite coral, but I definitely love them uh, another thing i love are the these uh, leather corals like this cladilia and and stuff as you saw earlier in the video um you saw one of my zoas earlier they're doing pretty good i tend to have a harder time with zoanthids they don't really take off of my tank but they are starting to make a comeback 
Um, I've been dosing a lot of fuel. I dose about the a whole inner cap of that every three days, and they've been starting to take off like these green zoas here. You can see there's two on the back now and stuff. They're starting to really come back, which is awesome. So uh, basically, other than that, you know, I just want to thank you guys for watching and staying here with me. There's quite a bit more video clips after this of so the fish and shrimp and everything. Definitely stay tuned and check those out. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them below, and I'll try and get to them as quick as I can. I usually get back in a couple days. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's really all I had to talk about as far as lighting and stuff. If you guys have any more questions, just let me know. I mean, definitely try picking up a higher end LED like a Kessler or something if you can. Uh, try and be careful with your dosing and try not to dose too much. Just try something simple like the Calquas or the Fuel. And just let me know how you guys' reef tanks are doing. Uh, comment below and leave me a channel name or something. I'll go check out your videos or, or leave me a link or something and I'll... Go and check out all you guys' reef tanks and leave a comment and a like. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, and uh, I'll subscribe back, and I'll see you guys soon.